Hey guys, thanks a lot for joining us. So on this little playlist, I basically just managed to get David onto a Zoom call and we just basically broke down the J-League, things to watch out for for the season upcoming, things to bear in mind from the season before. Uh, and the first part that we're going to go through today, we go through kind of the top five teams as they finished in the league last season, just key players from last season, transfer activity, formation of styles, a massive shout out to the whole series, uh, to gambatsakaenglish.blog. You'll find them on Twitter and obviously at that web address um, for supplying some great material for this as well so definitely give them a follow and I'm a, a love for uh, all the content we're able to give you as a result like subscribe share retweet all that good stuff guys and I hope you enjoy it so this is the table we finished up with last season and um, now for, for me and obviously yourself David when you're watching the form patterns of different teams you know how they finish the season and how they start the next one is an important kind of I think it's an important transition the way things have went over the last like 12 months because of all the stuff we've had with COVID and if you think about everything that's happened in Europe, the way season, there's not really been pre-seasons really since any sort of, sort of lockdown came in. It's just kind of like um, off-season off periods. I think we're going to see a little bit of that with um, MLS and the J-League and whatnot. But the season finished off last year with 18 teams, as we know. And a lot of them knew, or almost all of them knew, that we didn't have any relegation to worry about with maybe about two months of the season left to go or whatever. So we've seen heavy rotation. We've seen a lot of teams playing really odd um, you know, selections, and even for goalkeepers, strikers, all sorts of things happened. And a lot of the form patterns can be a wee bit misleading, I think. Um, what, 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 what would you think in terms of how the table finished last year? Did you see anyone underperforming in particular or someone who overstretched at the last hurdle? I think with uh, with the Asian Champions League, especially at the end of the season, um, a lot of teams were concentrating on that. You had teams like uh, Yokohama Marinos, um, obviously putting all their eggs into one basket. Uh, Vissel Kobe as well with Iniesta. They 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 really at the end of the season they because the squads had to split and they had to you know quarantine and go se separate ways. I think a lot of teams decided to concentrate on that. So um, I mean that's a good example. Yokohama Marinos, um, champions the season before last. They will have a, a, a their form for the end of last season is you can write it off and I think their their twenty twenty one will be much better. Yeah, um, as I kind of look at the form over the last ten matches, the top team was Nagoya Grampus. Does that surprise you? Mm. Uh, it doesn't. They they were they were really solid at the end of the season. Um, they've had a fantastic off season as well. They've they've signed quite a few players. They've signed uh, Manabu Saito from from Kawasaki Frontale. And they've added a lot of good squad depth there in the Champions League, the, the Asian Champions League this season. So it doesn't surprise me. They were playing really well at the end of the season. Um, they're probably just one striker short, maybe, of, of making a push for, for this season for the title, I think. Yeah. Well, the form they finished in was amazing. The, the, one of the better things about it was the goal difference. You know, they didn't really concede very many. I think I've seen... Mm -hmm. I no, just, they were solid. I've just changed on the screen looking at the transfers they've had. But um, I don't think they conceded more than three goals over 10 games or something like that. So no, they were good. A really they, they came from sort of uh, the mid table upwards to, to secure their spot in next year's Champions League. So they were they really made it solid at the end of the season. Yeah, so I'm looking. Like... they've got well, they've got one of the best keepers really in in the in in the J League in Langerak. So it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> doesn't hurt, does it? Um, no. so I'm looking at their form just kind of like before like the season came to like a pause. So. They basically, yeah, they, they were on quite a bad streak right before the lockdown happened. And I think um, them coming back, their, their form was absolutely incredible. Looking at their squad, right, so they've got a notable defence. Langerak in goals, of course, is a hero. We all know that. Um, yeah. The Australian man that he is. Um, at the back, the defenders I've got listed in front of me here, Hura Raya Fuji, Raya Tauro Ishida. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying hard with these ones. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yuichi Maruyama. Nakatani yep. Shinosuke, Narusi yep. Shimpai, Noshida Yutaka. I think I've done all right there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, that's, 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 uh, look, we're, we're not Japanese. Let's, uh, let's yeah. put it that way. Now, but, only two yeah, of those no, guys no, I mean, are in their. Two of those guys are thirty and thirty-one, and the rest of them are twenty-four and well, basically twenty-four, twenty, twenty, and nineteen. Yeah. A very young defense overall, which is good to see. Yeah, and they've they've added another youngster in there. For, uh, they've added uh, Morishita in there in the off season. He'll probably slot back in at, at right back, I'd imagine. Um, so they've added that youth in there. Morishita. Morishita, yeah. Who did he come from? Uh, he came from uh, is it Oita? Morishita. Oh yeah, I've got him here. He's already listed as a Grampus player on Soria. 23 years of age. 
Uh, oh yeah, his form's got, he's got 69 in there. That's good. And um, general scores are high. They've also signed. Uh, they signed uh, Yuzuki Kimoto from uh, Charezzo Osaka. Um, he he's kind of like a he plays centre back, kind of defensive midfielder, so he can play one of those two positions. What was his surname? Sorry. Kimoto. K I M O T O. Kimoto. Yusuke Kimoto. He's about thirty year old, but he's more of a utility player. He can play centre back or defensive midfielder. Yeah, I I quite liked um, the team he came from. I won a Sakamoto, as I think we've probably spoke about before. Mm, and um, good player. Yeah. We we'll, we'll kind of come on to talk about Saka um, their form towards the end of the season. But I quite liked watching them get some good scores and doing well. Um, so it's good to yep. see one of those guys. 26, okay, so a wee bit more kind of experience getting signed into the defence. Um, his scores are pretty much in line with the last guys, I suppose. Um, so some good cards coming out of there. The thing as well, because like when it comes to defenders, right, a lot of people, myself included, we like to look for those fullbacks that will get on the end of things, you know, whether it be um, like yep. getting goals or getting assists or whatever as well. But the centre back that commands a clean sheet out of a match can be just mm -hmm. as valuable and score just as high. I think coming from a, coming from a DFS background, you are you're kind of you are um, you tend to sort of gravitate towards fullbacks. I think yeah. with the so um, scoring matrix, I think you need to readjust your thinking slightly, and that's I, I find that centre backs are more valuable. Yeah. I got a uh, wee bit off topic, but I got a Matt Miazka recently, and that's really highlighted it to me because like two of his last three matches, he scored mega high, and it's with no goals or assists or anything. Yep. It's just been with like dominating a match, winning headers, clearing the ball, all that kind of stuff. That's so, it. um, and also, kinda... if you think about it logically, from sides that are down the bottom, uh, the more you're doing of those actions, the better. Exactly. Yeah, and these are top teams that will be dominating the ball as well as doing these things. They'll be actually making successful passes out from the back. Into midfielders, yep. you know, they'll be able to, you know, hit a hit a diagonal to a fullback and that kind of thing as well. So, well, I think that's a the, the lad at Kawasaki Frontal, uh, you know, Jesse L, the Brazilian. Uh -huh. He, the centre back Jesse L, uh -huh. from Kawasaki Frontal, he is a he dominates the point scoring as well because that's what he does. Passes the ball out a lot, a lot of interceptions. Yeah, he's a monster. Kawasaki Frontal are the, the kind of the poster child, in my opinion, like, of. Like the, the J League gone so rare because they've they had so many good cards last year. But Nagoya Grampus, yeah. the way they've finished, so solid, right? They're not going to, on the form you see here, they're not going to be spanking teams like 8 0 or whatever. But if you've got those, all those players that are contributing to those solid performances, those clean sheets, they're going to be scoring high every single week. And a lot of those guys can be undervalued and overlooked. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The way Nagoya play as well, they've got um, sort of central midfielder uh, Shoei Nagaki. You might know him. He's. He's a really, really super solid uh, midfielder. Scores sort of 50, 60, 70 points every game. Quite, quite in demand midfield card. He's uh, he underpins that. And the, the problem with Nagoya is they have got no real centre forward. That's that's the gaping error in there. They haven't really signed one. They had Mu Kanazaki, but he's uh, injured and out for the season. Really, uh, he had a, a long term injury. They've uh, and then they've got Kakatani, but um, that's going to be their downfall. Is his goals? Yeah. Well, they've got a big long list of midfielders um, on flash scores as I look at them here. They have. Uh, they have, yeah, they have an abundance, don't they? Oh, Inagaki, oh yeah, yeah, I see him there. I was trying to spell it differently when I was looking for him. Um, but yeah, they're really light on strikers. I think he, I think he played, he played, Inagaki played almost every minute of the last season, I think. Oh wow, that's all. That's always good to hear. Inagaki, let's have a repeat. Oh yeah, there he is there. I recognise his name. 29. Nice solid, yeah. That's what you want, you know. Those constant sixties to seventies, they're the sort of midfielders that keep you in the sniff of tournaments every game week. You know, we played every minute. Know, of every... Obviously, I mean, I don't know how old Inagaki is. I'd say what is he? 29, 29, 29 something like that. He's um, along with uh, the guy at Kashima Antlers, Kento Mizel. He's the same type of player, that same profile, that player that sits in midfield, doesn't do anything particularly special, but but drives out the points week in week out. Yeah. Um, for me, obviously, I was a big fan of like, Ayo Tanaka at Kawasaki Frontale um, yep. and guys like Mickey Amin. But they've they've sold a boy, I always forget who's who, but they've sold a boy in uh, Portugal, Santa Clara. But otherwise, yes. the team yep. is very much kind of the same. You know, um, and they're, they're obviously the favourites for the title again. Yeah. Um, so when we look at their squad, we kind of know, you know, the, the Jesse Eels, the Tanakas, the Amains, all this kind of stuff. There's no going to be much of a surprise. The one thing that does kind of strike me when I look at this is they do only have one goalkeeper on this 
list that I can find certainly anyway and I don't really yep. remember a number two backup card being available uh, on so rare uh, for a goalkeeper uh, from Kent Tano. I'd imagine it's Ken Tano. Ken Tano. Is that Ken? But he's not going to get a game. I mean, yeah, Jung Sung Ryong is, is number one. He'll stay number one. I know his age is against him. He's about 35, isn't he? 35, 36. Yeah. Because with teams like that, I want to see the number two who's like 20 coming through the academy yeah. you know that's why i want to kind of see well, there's, there's plenty there's plenty of teams on on the platform who uh, the goalkeeper is up for debate i know you've got one yeah i've got a few <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, hopefully it'll pay off but th so those were the two main teams from last year the third team which definitely deserves a mention is uh, of course it was a uh, gamba asaka um so they yes. finished second quite solid and um even with the form over the last 10 games i think they were quite powerful towards the end of the season yeah fourth best team in for the last 10 games and for the last 15 they were, yeah they were the third best so good form to finish off the second half of the season for them they're going into the champions league as well of course um yep. now their goal difference isn't too appealing i think for like goalkeepers or whatever you know 42 conceded 46 mm. scored out of 34 matches, no, it shows you there's a lot of goals in them at both ends of the pitch. Yeah, that sums them up really. They were they were solid at the back, but not electric going forward. Uh, and as you just said, there towards the end of the season, they they'd qualified for the Champions League, you know, fairly early. Um, they had they had the Emperor's Cup to concentrate on, and they they kind of took their eye off the ball. I think they lost two 0 at home to is it Pajalta? I think they lost at, at the end of the season. So yeah, um, going forward next year, they've obviously they've signed Leandro Priera from. Uh, from San Frecce. Um, uh -huh. So the, it looks like they're going to have a, a, a two up front now, combination of Usami and Pereira up front. And that might mean a bit more appealing attacking returns. I think I think Usami will drop back into the hole more and maybe Pereira play up front on his own. A target, man. Yeah. So I'm just looking at... So um... I, expect, I do expect them next season to maybe score a few more goals than, than this season. So I'm just looking at that blog we are chatting about. So... Uh, oh yeah, Sammy and Pereira up top. That's what we've got here as well. Idaguchi holding with Yamamoto. Really strong yeah, team. Yeah, Idaguchi. Idaguchi was uh, out for the uh, I don't know how many of the last few games. They they started experimenting with a lot of the youth prospects, um, Akuno and and obviously um, Kawasaki and stuff. So um, Idaguchi is, is a top top card to own on Sora for next season. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, similar situation with the goalkeeper. We've got Higashi Higashi Um <laughs> Yeah, he, gets years Gucci, older, yeah. So. Um, he should be plug and play really for people that own his card. I can't see him. Uh, I can't see him really being ousted by anyone. They've just got rid of another one of their goalkeepers to uh, Daegu in the K League. Okay. Uh, Lee, you know, he's gone. So there's no real competition there. He's the number one, obviously, apart from the long term for Kose Tani. Yeah. Kose Tani, that's it. The, the boy himself. So he'll be renewing himself with Shonen Belmere, as we kind of know. So that'll be. A great under twenty one card um, to kind of go into for next yep. year for sure. Um, the thing with under twenty one goalkeepers is they are the scarcest of the goalkeepers, you know. <laughs> you yeah, know, and with yeah, them really being are, yeah. what they are already, you know, like your Bodarts and Lafonts, the boy at Fernabache seems to be a revelation. Maximenko and Safanov yeah, yeah. when the Russian yeah. league comes back, there's you know you can name all the under twenty three goalkeepers that are worth owning quite easily. You know, it's not there's not too many secrets out and there. In the Asian leagues, there's there's so few of them. I mean, if you look at the J League historically, there's been there was a lot of there's been a lot of South Korean goalkeepers. Um, I mean, I think three of the top four have South Korean goalkeepers. Um, that was pretty much the the trend for for the Asian leagues. A lot of them have gone have now gone back this in the off season to the K League. So, finding an under twenty three Asian goalkeeper is is hard. Yeah, it's not easy at all. So, um, like with that in mind, like I think the under twenty three divisions, once you know that there's a finite amount of active goalkeepers, getting your hands on them as soon as possible, you know, as soon as practical, you know, is going to pay off for you at some point if that's a division you want to operate in. Um, there are a few, there are a few sleepers though that are going to that are come on the platform. Some that haven't, that actually weren't on last year. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye when the twenty twenty one cards do come through. Yeah, um, players like. Players like Zion Suzuki at uh, Urawa, they they will come onto the platform for the first time next year, and they're ones to have a look at. You yeah, you yeah, okay at Kashiwa Antlers is one of them. 
He'll still be under, yep. under 23 for next season. He's got a very imposing picture on his card. I think he's unforgettable once you've seen him. Um, <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he doesn't look 20, does he? No, he makes himself look big as well, even in the photo. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know they'll say that goalkeeper I'll makes himself what, look I'll big. What, I'll tell you what I like about him, though. He, on the pitch, he is, he is that type of goalkeeper. He does command the area really well. He, he, he's a lot better than he's 20 years old. Yeah. And again, looking at the, the blog by Gamba Saka, English blog, um, He's got my boy Koki Machida starting at centre back, which will be great for me. Yep. Uh, another under twenty three player. Well, yeah. And uh, the the Misawa I see here, number twenty. Is that's not the Yuta Misawa I was talking about earlier, is it? No, it's not. Misawa, not uh, Kento. No, it's Kento Misawa. He's he's the Kashima Antlers captain. He was the midfielder yeah. I was telling you about earlier. And they've got. Um, he's the one who sits deep, picks the, ball about. They've got two new signings, like you were telling me before we came on. T two Brazilians, Diego Pituca and Arthur Keke or Kike or whatever. Um, so two new midfielders coming in there it does look like they may oust our boy Ayasi Ueda from the team um, at least on this on this, we'll see what happens you know. but do you think these signings are to help them because Ga Kashiba Antlers didn't finish in like, the, the continental spots for the, for the Champions League or whatever they and they are traditionally in my opinion, I don't know if you agree or not one of the bigger clubs in the J League yeah, well they're the team I follow they're the team I've followed for about no. 10 years now so yeah, of course um, <laughs> I, I fell in love with them a while back but those two signings there are I think really what the thinking behind them is is, is that plugging that hole on the left hand side um, whether Ueda actually does start up top with Everaldo is up for debate I think the thinking really is is that Shoma Doi or uh, Arthur or Diego Pituca someone one of those three is going to sort of slot into a left hand wing position and they've got the kid there, Riotoro Araki, as well. Yeah, he was uh, he was promising uh, halfway through last season, but I think that they've identified that left hand side as the as the problem. Araki. Yeah. Hmm. Nineteen still. Oh, his, yeah, it's not a good card, by the way. A few yeah, DMPs, but um, he'll be cheap. Yeah. Oh, he's on auction now. It's none for sale, which is always a good sign when I look at a card if no one's selling it. They're now. You know, then there's probably a reason for is that. This, is this Iraqi, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, to be fair, it was around about, I don't know, what, a couple of months into the season, he really blew up on the scene. He was a really good little prospect. And then he, he, he just sort of got phased out over time. I think he, he got involved in a, a COVID outbreak with the, the youngsters. And then um, he got phased out. And then, sort of, uh, obviously, they have, on the right-hand side, they've got Juan Alano, the Brazilian, who's yeah. one of the top players at the club. So they were kind of mixing around the formations, changing it from a 4-4-2 to a sort of 4-4-1-1. So I think they'll, I mean, they only missed out on the Champions League qualifications literally in the last 96th minute of the season where the Raider couldn't put his chance away. But um, they'll they'll be there or thereabouts next season. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Cesare Osaka, we kinda, I kind of skipped by them, uh, so that's my bad. But they finished their season really strong and got themselves really high up in the table. Um, uh -huh. And again, similar to a few of the other teams we're talking about, finishing the season strong, you would hope that's going to translate into a strong start to the next season. Looks like they're shaping up again with a, a 4 5 1 or a 4 3 3, depending on how you look at it. Um, with a big ta uh, Taggart up front leading the yeah, line that's again. That's the big signing, isn't it? Yeah. That's the big signing. I think if you're looking for your cards for next season, you're looking for that goal score. Every season we seem to have one in the, the J or the K League. There's, there's one player who just sort of ramps away. I think Adam Tagger is going to. I mean, I followed him since the A League days, and his he was he was explosive back then. And I think if he doesn't get ten to fifteen goals in the J League, something's gone wrong, isn't it? Could he be this season's a longer? Uh, there is someone else. They've, uh, there is another Alonga. longer. Ooh. There's another Kenyan coming to the league. Who we'll talk about later. But he, uh, I think Adam Taggart is. is, is kind of nailed on for a 10 to 15 goal that's what Chiretto were, were lacking last year they were lacking someone to get on to the end of the Kiyotake uh, sort of set pieces and Adam Taggart's that kind of you know fox in the box isn't he yeah uh, I, I, I mean I've seen some of his cards go for silly money I've seen some of his cards go for really really cheap I think people aren't quite understanding I mean he didn't he didn't have an explosive last last season with Su Wan in, in the K League so I think people are judging him on that but from what I've seen of him previous to that, he's a goal scorer. Well, those are the trades I always find kind of pay off best, is the ones that maybe the general so rare user has access to less data on, a, or, or mm -hmm. less accurate data on someone's actual yep. ability or potential. 
and you, Agree. through different methods and means, maybe see that, oh, do you know what? Th- this is this has went well well right under the radar. I'm catching this. Um, he's he's the exactly the type of player they needed. He was that you know that number nine that, that sniffs around the box and can and, and you know get tap ins and yeah. I mean Kiyotake, the, the number ten there. He's he's a top player and he's 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 um you know feeding him into target should be the way they go next season. Kiyotake. Let's have a wee look at him. I reckon he's a playmaker then. And my boy Sakamoto on the other wing. Yeah, he's a talent. He's a talent. That's what they'll that's what they'll do. They'll literally put tag it in them and they'll just pepper crosses in and then sit back and try and they've also signed a Riki Harakawa in midfield from uh, Sagan Tosu. He's another one, another one of those who fits that mould of midfield as you sit and ping balls about and he's a great signing for them. They look they look really solid. They look like they've worked it out going forward what they needed to do. Rotation. Yeah, rotation can be a, a nightmare for some teams that aren't prepared for it in terms of, you know, squad rotation and that kind of thing. Asian you know, Champions League, Asian Champions League is not till April anyway, so it's not like it's going to start huh. anytime soon. But okay. it's, it's something to think about in the, in the longer future. term. No, definitely. His scores are really are really promising. And I think, again, a 30 ish year old playmaker, those guys, generally speaking, can be quite reliable for a high number of appearances, which is always what you're after. Whereas yep. the guys that are, like we're talking about with uh, uh, Iraqi earlier on, some guys might be all the promise in the world, but young guys just will not play 35 games a season. In most cases, you know, yep. there's also exceptions. Whereas the guy that's... It's an interesting, Sorry, you go. It's an interesting point, that, um, especially with, with youth and youngsters. On, on the, I've got a lot of them. I invested, as soon as I went on the platform, I bought a lot of the youngsters. And I think it's important to know that it's a cultural thing in Japan as well. What they do is they seem to bleed them quite heavily. They wait for them to explode. And then they sometimes they pull them back. And there's a good example of that Chiretto Osaka in uh, in Jun Nishikawa. He was, you know, he was touted to be the next, you know, the next big thing. He was linked with Barcelona. Just didn't didn't happen for him last season. And it, it's important to remember that there's that cultural thing in Japan where they don't want their kids to really explode super quick. They'll sometimes pull them back. Want them to be grounded. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that with a lot of the youngsters, you, you got. They they put them in the team. They sh- let them show what they've got, and then they they sort of aid the development by putting them back again. Yeah. Hmm. There's one on auction. I may put a wee cheeky bid in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's yeah, that? Jun Nishikawa. Yeah, I sold mine. I, I bought mine for five pounds. I've put a nine pound bid in. So. Probably won't mind, but we'll see what happens.